All right, quick video here on John 3.16. I want to go over this verse because there are many out there that poorly misinterpret this verse here. They believe that the Most High loves everybody in the world. And I'm going to show you in this video that that is not the case at all. All right, John 3.16 says that the Most High so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, before I get into it, understand that the English New Testament of the Bible comes from the Greek, all right? So the word world is not going to have the same meaning in English and in the Greek. The word world, as we know it by definition in English, means something a little different in the Greek. So we're going to look up this word world in the Greek Strong's Concordance and see what other definitions it has. The problem with uh, translating the scriptures into different languages is that sometimes the meanings get lost in the translation. So that's part of the problem as well. And yes, the scribes as well, the wicked scribes had a hand in this as well. So various factors play into this poor understanding of John 3.16. And it is one of the most popular verses people like to use and they don't even know what it means. All right, but anyways, all right, so what is this talking about when it says world? Does this mean the world, the actual world, or the inhabitants in the world? Because scripture says not to love the world, the age we are in, or the things in this age, the material things. So this is not talking about the actual world or the things found in the world. So obviously this is referring to the people in the world. However, we need to understand and try to figure out, is this is referring to everybody in the world or just a particular group? All right? So let's take a look at that word world. And it is number, it is number, come on, damn it. Sorry about that. This damn thing is giving me all kinds of problems. All right. It is 2889, cosmos. That's the word in the Greek. And it means order, the world. By definition, it could mean the actual world, which we know that is not what it's referring to. It could mean the universe in a broader sense. It could also mean worldly affairs. But we know that's not what it's referring to because, again, Scripture says, love not worldly affairs. All right? It could mean the inhabitants of the world. Mm, that sounds more like it, right? And it could also mean adornment. So we're going to deal with this here. The inhabitants of the world. Is this referring to everybody or just a few? Because I made a video concerning the people that were predestined not to believe. The imposters that say they believe, they'll tell you they believe. They might be convinced in their own minds that they believe, but they are deluded. Some people are predestined to damnation. They don't believe. Whatever they may think, whatever they may say. Nas exhaustive concordance. So we know this is not referring to everybody. If the Most High predestined some people not to believe, He closed their minds. And they could only get so much understanding of the scriptures. Very little, if anything, at all. Like really simple, basic stuff. So, yeah, so this is not referring to the whole world as a whole. This is referring to what it says here, the order. What order? You know, like brotherhood, creed. This is what this word means. Brotherhood, creed, order. All right? Here's the Strong's Exhaustive Concordance. It says that it is from this base word here, meaning orderly arrangement, decoration by implication, the world in a wide or narrow sense. Again, it's not referring to everybody in the world in a wide sense, but in a narrow sense, meaning certain people in this world, as far as the inhabitants go. 
This is not meaning the world literally, but figuratively. Okay? So, when you go back to John 3.16 and you read this verse, then the scriptures make a lot more sense because, again, he predestined some people to damnation. He predestined some to salvation. And he's calling others to win their crowns, to prove their loyalty, and to receive salvation. Those that endure and overcome until the end. All right, John 3.16. So let's read this in proper context. For the Most High so loved the order, the brotherhood, that he gave his only begotten Son for that order, that brotherhood, that those that believe, truly believe, not those that say they believe in him, should not perish but have everlasting life. So this is not dealing with the false believers, the phonies, the fakes, the false converts. This is, this is not saying that you could just walk up and say, oh, I believe. Anybody could do that, but we know that's not the case. People's actions speak louder than their words. So this is saying that whosoever you see that really believes and the things that are written in here, those are the ones that you know will have everlasting life. Most people take this out of context and say, oh, I could just walk up and, you know, be saved and I am saved. Uh-uh. It says if you endure to the end, the call need to endure. The elect, those are the ones that he sent his son to save. The fallen brotherhood that are in this world. The elect. You know? All right then. So, let's take a look at the next verse. John 3.17. It says that the Most High sent not His Son into this fallen world to condemn the people in this world as a whole. But He sent Him that this world or that the order, the brotherhood, through him might be saved. Again, the word world can mean four different things. So, he sent his son not to say, okay, I'm done with the people, not just the world and the things in it, but everybody in here is damned. No. Otherwise, there'd be no point in sending his son, right? He said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Yashua, meaning the fallen brotherhood. So there would be no point of him coming down here if there's nobody to save. He would just condemn the whole world and everybody in it. And that's it. This age is done. But that's not what it says. He came down to save those that were part of the brotherhood. And they fell into this realm. And he saved them. The elect. Those that have salvation. Assured salvation. And also he extended salvation to the Gentiles, the other nations. He's calling them, hey, if you want to be part of the brotherhood, you got to prove yourself. You got to earn your crown. Again, many are called, not everybody. So this is not meaning the whole world that he loves. Because he said, I called many, not everyone. And few, and out of the many that he's calling, only few are chosen. They're elect. Those that he died for. Otherwise, exactly, what, what did he came down here for to save, you know? He's not going to leave, leave it to chance for his elect that nobody would overcome. So he guaranteed them salvation. But the other people he's calling, they got to prove their worth. So this is what it means. He doesn't love everybody. This is a poor translation of the scriptures. Yes, even in the English, that's why you got to look up some of these words. But, of course, if you preach this in the churches and you find out the truth, guess what? The tight money will dry up and people will get turned off and, hey, but so be it, you know? So, that's what it is, man. So, that's all I got for this video and I hope people that have a poor understanding concerning these verses, especially John 3.16, well, now you know the truth. He so loved his people, the elect, that he sent the son down here to save them, rescue them, the fallen brotherhood. They have everlasting life. Yes, he's calling many, but not 
everyone out of those many he's calling will be saved either. They, they will fall short. So that's the truth. So, you know, till next time, be safe, stay blessed. Much love. Shalom.